Thank you to Hogue for the opportunity to speak to all of you today about a topic I'm so passionate about. My name is Dr. Hema Ramkumar and I'm your local ophthalmologist and retina specialist. I've been caring for patients with macular degeneration in Southern California for the last five years and I'm so excited to get started today and in this presentation I'll be telling you more about the two types of macular degeneration and how the eye focuses light on the retina and we'll be empowering you with information as to how to prevent this disease from affecting your life and how to help your loved ones if they are affected. Now the eye is like a camera. Light rays come into the eye and then they're focused on the back of the eye by the cornea and the lens which bend those light rays. Then once they're focused on the back of the eye, the signals are picked up by the film in the back of the eye called the retina or it's also a nerve tissue. There is one part of the retina that's the most important for high resolution and detailed vision and that's called the macula. The rest of the retina gives you motion, peripheral vision and allows you to see large objects. Once the vision is processed in the nerve of the retina, it is then exiting the eye through the cable of the optic nerve and it is processed by the brain. Now just like all parts of the body that go through age-associated changes, the eye goes through many age-associated changes. If the lens becomes more cloudy over time and less flexible, you can seem like your vision is out of focus both distant and near and that's called a cataract. The eye makes fluid every day, and if the drain becomes less efficient over time, eye pressures can build up, causing nerve damage. And now, if only the central vision is affected, that is a symptom of a problem in the macula, and glaucoma is a problem of peripheral vision. When I have the opportunity to look into the eyes of my patients, this is what I see. The yellow circle on the left is the optic nerve, and I can see all the small blood vessels and the area between them is a 5 millimeter area called the macula. Now the population of the United States is getting older and as the name implies macular degeneration disproportionately affects those people over age 80. While it can affect anyone it specifically affects women much more commonly than men and Caucasians more than any other race. In fact, it's the leading cause of vision loss in Americans over 60 and the second most common cause of blindness in the world. 11 million people in the United States today are affected by this and the number is expected to double over the next 30 years, mainly because our population is getting older. But the good news is 7 million of those people are at risk of vision loss but do not have significant disability from it yet. And in those people, interventions can help. The earliest symptom of macular degeneration that my patients tell me about is when they are outside, and especially on a sunny day, they come inside, they feel like they can't see anything and their vision is bleached. It can take them even over a minute to get their normal indoor vision back. That is an early sign and later people may notice that the contrast of their reading work or the menus are diminishing. They may also notice straight lines are becoming wavy or distorted. Later in the disease, you can get blurred spots or blind spots in the vision. Now there are two types of macular degeneration. The dry type, which is much more common, and in that type, um, you get multiple yellow spots in the macula called drusen. And the second type is wet macular degeneration. And this causes the, most, the highest likelihood of severe vision loss from bleeding. And it's very important for us to differentiate between the two because the prognosis and treatments are different. While dry is a slow process, wet can present very quickly and needs urgent treatment. Many years ago, we saw that patients with dry macular degeneration slowly started to accumulate drusen and central nerve loss called geographic atrophy. And those with wet macular degeneration got bleeding, scarring, and vision loss. But today, we don't have to just watch the disease get worse. We can be involved and prevent it from getting worse. 
And that's with the outstanding tools that we have in the office of the retina. And in the photograph on the left, you can see all the different layers of the retina. And on the right, you can see all the layers as well. And that is with a five minute non-invasive scan that's done in the office with equal resolution. And with this outstanding tool, we're able to see even the earliest signs of macular degeneration and chart the progress of our patients with therapy. If we're trying to differentiate between the dry and the wet type, there is a very common test called the angiogram in which we inject some vegetable dye in the eye, in the arm, and see that dye get into the eye with photographs. And if it is leaking out of an abnormal blood vessel, that is indicative of the wet type of macular degeneration. Dry macular degeneration can look different in different patients. You can see the photograph on the left. There are very bright yellow deposits, and that has both cholesterol and calcium. And they look uh, very small. The photograph on the right, there are larger, more bumpy appearing deposits. And that patient is at a higher risk of vision loss. And the photograph on the bottom shows an orangish, very well uh, demarcated area. And that is an area of nerve tissue loss from dry macular. So what can we do about it? Well, we can af affect our risk factors and change our risk factors that can influence our health. While there's no cure or treatment for it, there are certain things in our lifestyle that we can adjust that I'm going to tell you about right now. There's a, so many things that we can't change about ourselves. We can't change our age, or our ethnicity, or our family, and the genetics that comes with it, and even the color of our eyes. While all of those do increase your risk of macular degeneration, there, and um, smoking and heart disease, we can't necessarily uh, change which uh, diseases we have, but there are many things that we can change. Specifically, if we stop smoking, we can reduce our risk of vision loss. Being an active smoker increases your risk of both macular degeneration and vision loss from it two and a half times. Those cholesterol deposits accumulate in the eye, but if we get moving and decrease our size, the body can mobilize them more, and studies have proven that patients with early stages of disease are less likely to get the later stages. Making sure our blood pressure and cholesterol, cholesterol are controlled either by dietary modifications or by the medications prescribed by your doctor can also protect those small vulnerable blood vessels in the eye. So by embracing those good habits that are good for the rest of your body, you can prevent a vision loss from macular degeneration. A Mediterranean diet, which is comprised of lean meats, oily fish, and many green leafy vegetables, has been proven to be protective to the eye. So when you're thinking about a red meat and cheese or an, a tuna with some uh, walnuts and cashews and almonds, the oily fish and the nuts are a much better option to protect your macula. So you can do this uh, self-screening tool along with me. If you wear your reading glasses and close your left eye, focus on the black dot on the graph on the left. This graph is called an grid. While focusing on the dot and not looking around, check that all the lines are parallel and the squares are the same. Now, switch eyes. And you should see the same thing. The central dot should be your focal point and all the lines should be parallel. If you see any missing or warped areas, like you can see in the photograph on the right, you should speak to your doctor. I have my patients monitor their macula with this grid weekly to determine if there are any changes over time. And if there is a sudden change, you should definitely uh, present to your doctor because a treatment may be needed. The vitamins uh, over the counter have been specifically tested and formulated in a combination to make an AREDS formula. And clinical trials have shown that both of these formulas prevent vision loss in certain patients. The formula on the left is a combination of vitamin A, C, E, zinc, and copper. But more recently, they've changed that formula from the AREDS to the AREDS 2 by taking out vitamin A and adding in lutein and zeaxanthin. 
and that's because they found that former smokers were at higher risk of lung cancer on the AREDS formula. So if you want to take a vitamin that's good for your eyes, make sure you ask your doctor because some vitamins may be injurious to your health as well. So who benefits? Those with moderate macular degeneration, many of those yellow spots, some areas of nerve tissue loss, or if there's any areas of scar tissue formation. And the great news is these vitamins can reduce your risk of advanced disease by 25% and reduce the risk of vision loss by 19%. So if you're just wondering, would taking this vitamin help if you don't have any uh, disease in the macula or, and you just have a family member who's affected? It's been shown that the vitamin is not any more beneficial than a healthy lifestyle and a healthy diet. But if you have macular degeneration and you're hoping to just have a good lifestyle and diet and not take the vitamin, that would be dangerous because there's a definite benefit with the vitamin. The exciting thing is with dry macular degeneration, there are so many clinical trials that have completed and so many that are ongoing to try to help slow the course of the disease. Specifically, uh, drugs that are in clinical trials now are looking at making nerve cells live longer, uh, blocking the inflammation associated with these cholesterol deposits, and trying to decrease the effect or decrease the accumulation of the toxic byproducts in the retina. The most exciting area for me is the stem cell research. The stem cell research that has been beneficial in patients with dry macular degeneration is taking embryonic stem cells and then turning them in to retinal cells and then re-implanting them under the retina in patients with geographic atrophy. That's been shown to slow the course of the disease and stabilize and in some cases slightly improve vision. But any type of intravenous uh, Stem cell therapy for macular degeneration is very dangerous and should be avoided if not part of a constructive uh, clinical trial with close regulation. The biggest change in macular degeneration research is the discovery of the hormone vascular endothelial growth factor. This is a protein that makes watertight blood vessels open up and become leaky. When they leak, the central part of your vision can become distorted. And this is true not just in macular degeneration, but also in diabetes and other retinal diseases. And now we can block the effect of this molecule. If you can remember the previous retinal scan, there were many layers all together, just like you can see on the right side of the photo in the bottom. But when macular degeneration goes from dry to wet, there's bleeding, as seen in the photograph on the top left, and this bleeding is uh, highlighting uh, the scar tissue when you do a fluorescein angiogram, which is the white area that's bright on the top right photograph. On the retinal scan on the bottom, you can see a lumpy, bumpy area, and that's the scar tissue under the retina that should not be there. And that leaks fluid and blood, and that's the black area in between the scar tissue and the retina that causes people's vision to become distorted. So when there is significant bleeding with macular degeneration, you can see the blood just by looking into the eye. And over time, if the blood becomes scar tissue, as seen in the photograph on the right as the grayish white area, that can cause significant vision loss. So what can we do about wet macular degeneration? That's a question we've been answering as a field for the last 50 years. And initially, the treatments were hot laser, then surgery, then cold laser. All of those stopped the disease in its tracks, but none of them improved vision. The good news is, for the last 16 years, we've been improving vision in patients with wet macular. So the old treatment was laser. You could see the photograph on the top was a bl blood around scar tissue. That white dot was lasered, and you can see the photograph on the bottom, it has some uh, grayish change and dark change to it, it's no longer leaking blood. But this did not improve vision in patients. So now the standard of care treatment across the world is intravitreal injection therapy. After sterilization of the eye and of course significant anesthesia and numbing of the eye, the, and the uh, molecule that stops the vascular endothelial growth factor is injected into the eye and that medicine stays in the eye for a month, reducing the leaking of those blood vessels that cause decreased vision. This is a therapy that's given a monthly, 
uh, for patients. And this is a scan uh, on the top of representative of a patient of mine with active wet macular degeneration when they first presented. You can see the architecture of the retina is more like a mountain. It's swollen and thick with fluid. The patient's vision was decreased to only being able to see a large objects and the big E. But after three, the vision, so with monthly therapy, you can see the vision can become significantly improved and this patient even got driving vision in this eye. So the great news is that 85% of patients with severe vision loss from wet macular degeneration get a significant improvement in their vision and their distortion, and they can maintain this vision for their lifetime. While many of them need injection therapy for two years, some of them need it for less, and about one-third of them need it for more. But the great news is throughout this time, the vision and quality of life and function is improved. So this is a disease in which there's a lot of hope. While it can take away the faces of our loved ones, therapy can restore it. There are four FDA-approved treatments for macular degeneration, and the names of the medicine that we inject into the eye are listed here. The most is Avastin, and this is used in an off-label fashion. In fact, it used to be used for patients with metastatic colon cancer. And a few patients who had colon cancer and wet macular degeneration were getting their cancer therapy, and all of a sudden they could see again. And that's how we discovered that this molecule plays a big role in a macular degeneration. And now all of the drugs that we're using are basically attacking the same uh, molecule in slightly different ways. The good news is the injection therapy, while it sounds scary, is extremely safe and any risk of complication with therapy is much less than 1%. So for my patients with macular degeneration, I first identify who is at risk of vision loss, offer them ways to reduce those risks, either vitamin or exercise. And I talk to them about the therapy that can help improve their vision and we discuss ways to improve their quality of life. If you suffer from macular degeneration, ask those around you, um, your family members and those close to you for help. Because if you don't ask, then they won't understand the struggles that you have with vision. Specifically, my patients tell me about how one day they're able to write a check and read fine, and the next day they can't. Improving the lighting, increasing the wattage on the bulb can uh, significantly work. For uh, family members, it's, much, uh, it's very helpful for them if you can drive them home, the patients who are getting injection therapy, because this can help as uh, the eyes can be a little bit irritated the day treatment. And most importantly, if you have questions, if you're wondering what stage of the disease do you have, do you have the dry type or the wet type, will glasses or cataract surgery help? And would you be a candidate for any other uh, treatments? Ask your doctor. Write your questions down and get answered. Because this is a very important part of the doctor-patient relationship. And if you're having trouble doing your activities of daily living with your glasses, ask if it's time to see a low vision specialist. Because we know there are many things that make it difficult for you to see. The vision fluctuates. And in some cases, patients can even see hallucinations of memories, and that's all part of macular degeneration. We know that this is not just an eye problem. This is something that can cause uh, frustration, loneliness, and depression, a significant decrease in your independence, and it is a cause of disability. So we want you to know that there are many tools out there to help you improve your vision, from handheld magnifiers to stand magnifiers, to glasses with uh, telescopes on one lens or both. There are many different uh, tools out there. For using a printed reading material, you can use a closed circuit television that will magnify the print. But probably the best tool that exists now that my patients benefit from the most is the iPad. And that's because you can have such a strong backlight and you can magnify the size of the print outside of a blind spot. There's also an FDA-approved intraocular telescope for patients who have not yet had cataract surgery, and this shrinks the size of the blind spot and it can improve your quality of life. 
So it is wonderful that there are many support groups out there. And if you are a patient with macular degeneration and are connected with a support, support group, you may learn many things about how to best live with the vision you have and how to maximize your function and to improve your quality of life. The most important take home message from this talk should be that we have come a very long way. Just 20 years ago, this was a diagnosis that people were waiting for blindness to hit. That's just not the case anymore. We have excellent treatment options. And even if you have wet this, these days, I tell patients that you should expect to be able to see well and maintain your independence. If you're wondering about any new treatment options, ask your doctor because for dry macular degeneration, there are many trials out there. And for wet macular degeneration, we even now have a, a late stage uh, clinical trials for patients getting an intraocular implant and that don't need injection therapy. And so there are many, many new things on the horizon. It's a wonderful time to uh, be connected with a doctor to ask about how you can improve your vision. And now you should know that wet macular degeneration is a chronic disease that is manageable for most patients and not something you should be so scared of. I want to thank all of you for your attention and the time that you took to listen to this talk today. I am happy to be available to answer any questions and I wanted you to know that um, there are uh, many, many things that people are sometimes afraid to ask, and there's no question that you should be uh, shy to ask. Okay, so the first question is, would you agree about blood pressure and macular degeneration? Many people wonder about what the connection between blood pressure is with macular degeneration, and that connection is blood vessels. So blood vessels are, are throughout our body. They go to our heart, our brain, and the smallest blood vessels are in our eye. When people have high blood pressure, the stress of that pressure on the blood vessels erodes the inner lining and makes them weaker. This is why um, damaged blood vessels can cause problems in the heart and the brain and even in the eye. Because the blood vessels are so small, they're vulnerable to damage. And this is true for macular degeneration and other diseases as well, such as diabetes. So if you have high blood pressure, taking medication and doing the appropriate dietary and exercise interventions to reduce your blood pressure simply puts less stress on the small blood vessels in your eye and on the blood vessels in your body. And if you have high cholesterol, decreasing cholesterol levels decreases the clogging of those blood vessels and can decrease the amount of drusen that get deposited in the eye. 